WCBI News at 10 starts now. Thanks for joining us tonight at 10. A viral video is circling on social media showing an employee of Campgrounds of America telling a couple to leave the Octibaha County Lake while holding a gun. Here's a look at that video. This lady literally just pulled a gun because we out here and didn't have reservations. Cell phone video taken yesterday when the couple and their dog they were asked to leave the property. You can see a woman wearing a KOA shirt with a gun telling them to leave. Now, the couple said they were told at the front office they, in fact, did not need a reservation at the lake there. The woman eventually places the gun back in her pocket, as you see there. Now, we've reached out to KOA and it sent this statement stating Campgrounds of America Inc. is aware of the incident and is currently reaching out to the parties involved. Our con first concerns is always safety and security. Now, just moments ago, we heard from Michael Gast with KOA, who added that Campgrounds of America prides itself on providing a welcoming, safe environment for everyone to enjoy the outdoors. We'll, of course, be, uh, continue to follow this story and have more tomorrow at 5, 6, 9, and 10. Time now to toss things over to Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson to get a first look at our Monday evening forecast. Hey there, Keith. Scott, right now, 1001. It is a warm 80 degrees here in Tupelo. It still feels like 82, but things are cooling down down Starkville. You are down to 72, 75 for you in Winona, 77 in Columbus and Macon right now. Lows tonight down to around 70. And guess what? We have more heat. Coming our way for Tuesday, a mix of sun and clouds. The heat index in the mid 90s, about 94 to 98. But another warm day, winds from the south and southwest, 5 to 15. Low to maybe mid 90s, perhaps as warm as 94. For you in Tupelo tomorrow, we stay hot. Rain chances not zero, but fairly limited for the next seven days. Welcome to summer. Your full forecast coming up. Memorial Day takes on a new meaning for Gold Star families whose loved ones lost their lives defending our country. Eight of those families, they were recognized this weekend at the Mississippi Braves game, including the family of Mark Lucas Tucker, a Pontotoc County native. Tonight, Cordy Ann Jackson has his family's story and why they want to keep their son's memory alive. Moments of silence like these take on new meanings for families like Donna Bagwell's. Her son, Mark Lucas Tucker, chose a life of service. He uh, was going to be a lifer, and he was. It was just a shorter life than what we expected. Tucker joined the Marine Corps at 23. He was deployed to Iraq with the 9th Engineer Support Battalion. His mom talked to him on June 7th, and he filled her in on the timeline ahead of their latest mission. Stay up that night and sleep the next day because the mission was the next night. But he would call me, and about 11 o'clock that day, I was on my mail route, and I had the most horrible headache I've ever had. It was like somebody hit me in the back of the head with a sledgehammer. I couldn't figure out what was going on. That night, she got the knock on the door from his fellow Marines. When they told me what time he died in Iraq, it was the same exact time that I got the headache. And he died in a rollover and had massive head injuries. But as his mom sees it, he died doing what he loved, serving our country. He loved being a Marine, and he was good at it. His uh, men and women that served with him, you know, said he was a leader. As the years have passed, it's moments like these that now mean so much to Gold Star families like the Bagwells. Knowing that they're not forgotten means a lot to the Gold Star families because that's the one thing we don't want them to be forgotten. The Mississippi VA doesn't want those service members or their families forgotten either. Five, 10, 20 years from now, they're still grieving, they're still hurting, and this is just a way that we as a grateful nation, a grateful state, can say thank you. So as you grill and enjoy time with family, don't forget why we observe Memorial Day. Courtney Ann Jackson, WCBI News. Hundreds gathered at the Mississippi Veterans Memorial Cemetery in Newton this morning. The ceremony paid tribute to the soldiers who sacrificed everything for freedom. While it was an emotional event, Stacy Pickering, who is the executive director of Mississippi Veterans Affairs, says that Memorial Day serves as a reminder that soldiers' lives will not be forgotten. Here closer to home at the Courthouse Square in Pontotoc, dozens this morning, they were there to honor fallen members of the military. U.S. Navy and World War II veteran Thomas Edward Lucas, he was a guest speaker at the event. Lucas is 93 years old and talked about his time in the Navy. He joined when he was just 17. He says it's important to pay honor and pay tribute to those who paid the ultimate price. 
we didn't get this for nothing. We had to fight for it, and we got to continue fight every day for freedom. And you got to obey the law. And the one thing I found missing is respect. We don't have respect for our adults. We don't have respect for law enforcement. As a former chief of police, that really bothers me. The service ended with a special wreath link ceremony. Songs, prayers, and roll calls were the highlight of a Memorial Day service in Ackerman. Citizens there met at the Choctaw County Community Center to recognize the fallen soldiers from World Wars I and II and Korean conflict and Vietnam conflicts. The program also included a special welcome home to the members of the 155th Brigade. Organizers say it's important to remember those who gave their lives to protect our freedoms. You look around and uh, you don't find people now that's very patriotic. They don't even think about uh, the soldiers that gave their lives in World War I, World War II, Vietnam. This is the first year that the chamber partnered with the American Legion to host the program. Memorial Day weekend, it marks the unofficial start to the summer season, which also means that there are more boats on the water. This weekend is one of the busiest for boat traffic. Our Jory Talley, she hit the tin tom today. She has more. Memorial Day weekend means the boats are hitting the water. This is first day out this weekend. Oh, yes. But boaters aren't the only ones making waves this holiday weekend. Conservation officers have one thing on their minds while patrolling up and down the waterway, safety. Constant awareness, you know, out on the water is a lot different than being out on the road. You got multiple angles of people going to be coming from, different risks, uh, you know, different hazards you got to be aware of. Whoever's operating that vessel needs to maintain constant awareness at all times and be considerate of other people. That also means checking for life jackets and making sure everyone is following all laws. We had very good compliance last year with uh, life jackets. Uh, not a whole lot of safety issues going on. We're very proud of everybody out there. This year we're just trying to keep that record going and make sure we have plenty of visibility out on the waterway and people are continuing to be safe. Corporal Carol Spates says conservation officers learn something new each year the busy boating season rolls in. One thing that I'm real big about is, you know, if you're going to be out after dark or expect to be after dark, make sure you do a check on your navigation lights. That's one of our primary citations that come up is from it. people traveling at night. They don't check their lights beforehand, and when they get out there, turn them on, they don't work. So definitely do a function test on those before you get out in the water. And speaking of checks, this is Private Joshua Stoll's first time patrolling the Tom Bigby during Memorial Day weekend. Traffic count, probably. Yeah, we've not seen this. I've not seen this kind of traffic out here. Like I said, I was in Texas all last year training. Um, so the, the traffic count, 42 boats on one beach. They were just packed. There was, there was very little space. They had other boats were having to go find other beaches to, to put up on. The new season brings a new danger, courtesy of the spring floods. Well, with the flooding this year, we've seen a lot of sandbars that weren't here this time last year. So um, hopefully folks are taking a little bit slow. We found a couple that weren't there last year. We found some stumps that weren't there last year. Now those patrolling the waters say they want everyone to have fun just to be safe. Pretty nice weather this evening. Hopefully you could take advantage not only this evening, but for the last couple of days too. That was the view over in the West Alabama tonight. Upper 60s, low 70s, four hour lows, mild and humid. The full forecast is next. WCBI First Alert AccuWeather Forecast with Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson. Our Tuesday promises to be pretty warm, much like today. We start out around 71 at 7 o'clock, 89 at noon, 93 at 4, 88 or so at 7 o'clock. Winds from the south and southwest, 5 to 15. Columbus, Tupelo, Vernon, Durham's Pharmacy, Louisville, Mississippi. That is our Alpha Insurance Camera Network. Pretty nice out there this afternoon into the early evening. The setting sun. Hopefully you can take advantage. Pretty nice weather overall this weekend. That big dome of heat, you know it. It's going to erode just a little bit as some cooler air tries to nudge on into the region. So slightly cooler later this week. Let's talk about that because we have baseball in Starkville. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, upper 80s to low 90s here. Can't rule out a stray storm Friday. I think we should be in pretty good shape here for the baseball game. Same story in Oxford, too. Upper 80s to around 90. The sun is potent. You need to be prepared for it, but things look pretty good. I think it was last year, remember the regional that was taking place in Oxford, and we had that thunderstorm, and it was like a waterfall. 
up there with some of that baseball that tried to take place last year. I think this year is going to be a little bit different. 70s to low 80s across the region. If you live outside of the urban core, if you live out in a rural spot, things are cooling down now nicely now that the sun has gone on down. Look at this big cluster of storms. Dayton, Ohio right here. Active tornado warnings in place right now. This big cluster continues moving east southeast. And we also have a big cluster of storms out here across the high plains as well. It seems like that's where the storms have been. And that's where they have been today. Over 40 reports of tornadoes from Denver all the way through the Great Lakes. And if you want to see more storms, head up to uh, that part of the world for tonight and for tomorrow too. And also in the Wednesday just to our northwest. So we don't really have to worry about any active weather here anytime soon. Just plenty of heat. Now we will have a slight chance for a little bit of rain later this week. Tomorrow morning, some clouds perhaps will become partly cloudy. Now there could be a little bit of rain not too far away from us tomorrow, southwest of Memphis, down through the Delta into Arkansas and Louisiana. I think for the most part we should be dry, although we'd like to see a drop or two around here. It's been pretty dry of late. Partly cloudy, warm and humid on Wednesday. Better rain and storm chances. Some of those could be hefty out there in Oklahoma and Arkansas and Texas. But by the time that system gets here on Thursday, look, it just falls apart, so we don't really expect a lot of widespread rain around here Thursday. Friday can't rule out a little bit of rain in the region, but at this point we're just going to go with a 20% chance or an opportunity, if you can call it that, Thursday and Friday. A little bit cooler for the weekend, but still trending pretty nice for the next seven days if you like dry weather. There's your forecast. More of the show is coming up. WCBI News at 10 with Scott Martin. Welcome back, everyone. As we age, we often find ourselves facing more frequent and more serious health issues. This week on Health Talk with Baptist, we will take a look at three of the most common conditions that affect older Americans. Hello, I'm Dr. Ashley Harris, geriatrician and chief medical officer at Baptist Memorial Hospital Golden Triangle. This week, we will be looking at conditions that affect the older population. Dementia is a condition where there is deterioration in memory, thinking, behavior, and the ability to perform everyday activities. Although dementia mainly affects older people, it is not considered a normal part of aging. Alzheimer's disease is the most common type of dementia. The symptoms of dementia can be understood in three stages. The early stage is often overlooked because the onset is gradual. Common symptoms include forgetfulness, losing track of the time, becoming lost in familiar places. As dementia progresses to the middle stage, the signs and symptoms become more obvious and include becoming forgetful of recent events and names, difficulty with communication, experiencing behavioral changes including wandering and repeated questioning. The late stage of dementia results in continued decline in function and activity. Symptoms include becoming unaware of time and place, difficulty recognizing relatives and friends, difficulty walking, and behavior changes that may escalate and include aggression. There is no current cure for dementia, but interventions are available that can slow its progress. More importantly, much can be offered to improve the lives of people with dementia and their caregivers. The main goals for dementia care are early diagnosis to promote optimal management, improving physical activity, detecting and treating challenging behavioral symptoms, providing long-term support to families and caregivers. Join us next time for Health Talk with Baptists, where we will discuss falls. Your topic suggestions to Health Talk at WCBI.com. Health Talk has been brought to you by Baptist Memorial Hospital Golden Triangle. The road to Omaha is officially set, and the Bulldogs and Rebels begin the postseason in their own homes. We get you ready for the NCAA tournament next in sports. Playoff baseball returns to Duty Noble Field. Mississippi State earning the second national seed in its program history and could be hosting until Omaha. The Bulldogs will headline the Starkville Regional, welcoming Miami, Central Michigan, and Southern to town. The Bulldogs are the number six national seed, meaning they would host a Super Regional if they're able to advance. Game one against Southern set for Friday. It'll be a noon first pitch. The Diamond Dogs checking out the field from Duty Noble. The Starkville Regionals matched up with the Stanford Regional. That includes Stanford, UC Santa Barbara, Fresno State, and Sacramento State. The road to Omaha begins in Starkville. Head coach Chris Lamonis says the Bulldogs will need home field advantage with the teams that are coming to town. 
a good bracket, a hot Southern team that can really hit. Um, Central Michigan's had an unbelievable year, and then Miami's always Miami, and they've had a um, a new run here since they've got a new head coach, and they, they've played very well. So we got our work cut out for us. If we play our baseball, I'd, I'd like to see the team that beats us. You know, um, it's not a cocky piece; it's more along the lines of if when we play our baseball, I think we're the best team in the country. Um, you know, we're, we're deep on the mound; we can hit, we play good defense, but but that doesn't mean we're going to roll out here and play well. Um, you know, we just gotta slow things down a little bit, kind of get back to us here at home, and um, really get locked in on this regional. That's what's great about this team this year. I think the depth is unreal. We have a lot of freshmen stepping up now. Um, Sarantola came out and threw really well. Brandon Smith showed that he can really perform in a big environment. So, you know, we're excited. We're excited how deep this postseason run can go, just with the depth we have. Thanks to its SEC tournament run, Ole Miss is awarded with playoff baseball in the friendly confines of Swayze Field. The Rebels were named the 12th overall seed and will host an NCAA regional for the ninth time in program history. The Rebels hope the momentum from the SEC tournament propels them into a deep run into June. WCBI Sports' Courtney Robb has more from Oxford. Tom, before Sunday, the reality of Ole Miss hosting a regional here in Oxford wasn't really on anyone's radar. But after a run in the SEC tournament for the Rebels now, the road to Omaha will officially start here at Swayze Field. It's about playing well. You know, people can talk about all the matchups they want and how everything uh, shakes out, you know, as far as uh, uh, the bids. But at the end of the day, it's, it's about playing well. And uh, I know it sounds like coaches speak, but it's really the truth. When you, if you're good enough, if you play well, then uh, the rest will take care of it, uh, take care of business. Right. I think the SEC tournament just kind of uh, puts things in the right line for us. Uh, you know, we can beat anybody at any time, um, and we just have to be consistent and believe, like uh, Cooper and Coach Beaver saying yesterday. And I think we have the the talent to do that. As the twelfth national seed, Ole Miss will welcome in Illinois, Jacksonville State, and Clemson with matchups beginning here at Swayze Field. On Friday. Reporting here in Oxford, Courtney Robb for WCBI Sports. Tom, I'll send it back to you in Columbus. As Courtney mentioned, here's a look at the Oxford Regional, the Rebels with Illinois, Clemson, and Jacksonville State. Ole Miss begins its road to Omaha 7 p.m. first pitch against Jacksonville State. They are the champions of the OVC baseball tournament. Ole Miss has named Deputy Athletics Director and former basketball All-American Keith Carter as its interim athletics director. Carter takes over after Ross Bjork left to take the athletic director position at Texas A&M last week. Carter has been a part of Ole Miss athletics since 2009. That's it for sports. We'll have last year forecast coming up right after the break. Motorcycle lovers, listen up. An area group is hosting a golden triangle ride for a good cause. The cryptic... Few is hosting Tammy's Ride to help pay for camp this summer for Camp Rising Sun. Tammy Prescott, she's a Lowndes County deputy who's battling her own cancer. She spends every summer at Camp Rising Sun. Now, Camp Rising Sun is a kids' camp where kids who are facing their own battles against the disease they get to take a break and go to camp for a week during the summer. Now, the big ride is happening this weekend, and it's a day that those involved in Tammy say they're ready for. You know, when, when you can do things for people that you, you know. And uh, and you can help out a good cause like this. So it's, it's a little more, a little more personal. God always provides in His own way, mm -hmm. and uh, these guys have done a lot of work, a lot of preparation to do this, and I and I just know that we're going to have a wonderful turnout. Now the ride starts at the American Legion on Chubby Drive here in Columbus, and will go across the Golden Triangle. Registration starts 8:30 Saturday morning. Now there's going to be music, food, and a whole lot of fun. Now even if you don't have a motorcycle. You're asked to come out and have a good time and support a good cause. Weather-wise, pretty warm for that ride. Really warm for anything over the next seven days. It's the end of May, almost June. A uh, chance for a little bit of rain in the region Thursday and Friday. At this point, don't bank on it. Assume more dry weather and hot weather than anything else, Scott. But it will be a little bit cooler, perhaps, by Friday. At versus least it's not like 95. Fine. Yeah, speaking of that, you know, <laughs> so over in Georgia and northern Florida, they've been around 100 the last couple of days. Mm -hmm. So it hasn't been that bad, but it's still, you know, it's hot. It's I don't know how true my app was. I had an app yesterday that said heat index was like 100, 101 here, but 
Nonetheless, it was hot yesterday. I know that. And even earlier this afternoon, I saw the Columbus Observation spitting out 97 for heat index. So, yeah, it's felt hot, but... Summer's here, people. You know, it Summer's could always here. be worse. So. It always could. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you very much, Keith. Thanks, have a, uh, thanks for watching, everyone. Have a great night. We'll see you tomorrow.